good friend of mine told me that I don't have to start every YouTube video with something witty. It's really good because today I'm witless. This video is one that's probably long overdue. Uh, it's a video about a game that I've been following since really about 2016. Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, an upcoming MMO by Visionary Realms that was originally kickstarted and now is funded by us and a few angel investors here and there. It is a game that is currently in its pre-alpha state, so a lot of the information here about why I'm so excited could change between now and release. I wanted to stay on the surface and speak from my perspective about what I'm most excited about and why I continue to follow this game and why, if you share similar interests, I think you should too. But before we go further, I want to mention a few wonderful resources that have much deeper Pantheon knowledge than I do. Starting with Pantheon.plus, a community-driven website that is a wealth of Pantheon information. Want to find out some lore tidbits? Learn about some fascinating community members? Catch up on the latest news from Visionary Realms? This is your stop. I routinely try and catch their Pantheon Rewind podcast and or YouTube video, however you want to watch or listen to that show. It is a great rundown of events that have happened over the week within the community of Pantheon, and I highly recommend them. Nathan Napalm is a YouTube creator with a tremendous personality. If you want a heavy dose of entertainment with your gaming news, I highly recommend this channel. You'll find a variety of content on Nathan's channel, everything from puppets to JRPGs. And of course, Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Bazgrim TV is a YouTuber who has a talent for delivering news you want quickly. If you don't have much time, but you want to catch up on Pantheon news and notes, I recommend the Baz Flash. Baz has also conducted some of the most influential interviews for Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, so I highly recommend giving them a watch. Last, but certainly not least, Visionary Realms themselves. They've recently committed to improved communication each month, and it's been going well. They've been steadily producing streams, newsletters, and some website updates. You can find them on Twitch, YouTube, and their website, PantheonMMO.com, which was used heavily in this video. All of these sources will be in the description down below. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Redbeard Flynn. I am a YouTuber, an author, and a Twitch streamer. If you want to come chat with me about Pantheon Rise of the Fallen or any other games you're interested in, please come talk to me at twitch.tv slash redbeardflynn. I would love to say hi. So getting into the very first part of this that makes me so interested in this game specifically, social driven. On the FAQs of PantheonMMO.com, the following question is asked, who is the targeted player or demographic based for this game and why? I want to hone in on a few sentences from the answer. Pantheon is first and foremost a deeply social game. Players who desire cooperative play, working together as a team, and the shared experiences that result from playing with other people to overcome challenges will enjoy Pantheon. That's me. That is 100% me, and that is why I'm so excited for this game. When I look back at EverQuest, the MO I have spent by far the most time in, I don't immediately think of gameplay. I don't even think of lore, which was so integral to my growth as a writer, learning how it was used to world build in the game. What I think of are the friendships and memories, both good and bad, that I made in that game. I have videos on this very channel about some of the lifelong friends I've made playing EverQuest. The social aspect of EQ is what made the game last so long, not necessarily the gameplay. Here's hoping that Pantheon can also deliver on that promise of social interaction that sticks with us. Moving on to number two should be no real surprise, seeing as this is both a gaming and a writing channel, lore. EverQuest was described as a living, breathing world, not just a game. Similarly, Pantheon wants to create a world. Its front page invites you to 
Explore the rich landscape, the fragmented civilizations forced together by massive planar collisions and become part of the world itself and as it tells its story. The lore of Pantheon is deeply tied to the experience of the MMO, so much so that one of the key aspects of the game, perception, is routinely shown in the videos that Visionary Realms puts out. The perception system is tied to storytelling in Pantheon. It remains to be seen exactly how deeply this will be used, but it has already been showcased on several Pantheon streams with Co Carnage and some of the creators mentioned before. The lore of the world is discovered by the player. In a sense, bringing the world to life around them. Pantheon Plus scored an interview with lead writer Jayan Gerhardt, a video I highly recommend if you want to learn a bit more about how much lore will play a role in Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. So point number three is going to be strategy. And I'll start with a quote from PantheonMMO.com. Running through a dungeon isn't a matter of five minutes and some area effect spells. Encounters take thought, strategy, and teamwork. Know your role and pray your allies do too. That is the tagline splash across the Pantheon MMO front page. Watching the live streams and their frequent deaths, even with some GM funny business, shows this to be true. In Pantheon, it's evident it will be important for each party member to know the role of their class and to know how they work best with other classes. To me, this doesn't mean min-maxing. It means going back to the roots of tabletop style gameplay in games like EverQuest and early Warcraft, where different classes had specific roles to counter what the enemy does. Whether it's splitting a pool, CCing, healing, tanking, or just blowing shit up with a fireball, Class identity appears to be at the heart of strategy for Pantheon based on what we've seen so far. Kind of going hand in hand with strategy is challenge. What good is CC if it's not needed? What good is a healer if your tank doesn't take much damage? The proof of challenge is once again boldly on the front page and shown through the setbacks and multiple deaths faced by the intrepid co-carnage Jim Lee and others who have delved into Pantheon to show off the game to a new audience and suffered many um, unfortunate deaths along the way. The website states, no handholding, no easy mode, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. Bring friends, you'll need them. In 2017, VR released a trailer for Pantheon. After watching a solo knight fall to an enemy, it cheekily says, but bring friends. It then launches into an epic montage of group play, promising that unique, challenging strategy experience that you can only get with that social interaction with everyone. Some places like MassivelyOP.com have tried to quantify the golden age of MMOs, and in so doing, have touched on a myriad of topics, the gist of which came down to personal opinion or sub, sub metrics. For me, though, the golden age will always be the games that combine the social, social need with a satisfying risk versus reward. It's a delicate balance. Too much of the challenge, too little reward can put people off, but flip it too far the other way and it'll feel bland and boring to another subset of the population. It remains to be seen where Pantheon will fall on this, but the fact that they're trying so hard to nail this aspect is heartening. Our fifth and final point is community. Wait, didn't didn't I already mention this social driven? No, this isn't some not so clever attempt. I did say I was lacking in wits at the beginning of the video, didn't I? But no, it's not some not so clever attempt to throw in a fifth point by reiterating the importance of the first. What I mean here by community is the actual people who've been rallying around the game for years. I've watched several games through development and seen communities grow around them and fall away. What I've never seen is the tight-knit bonds being made by this game that doesn't technically exist yet. I am amazed by content creators like Pantheon Plus, Nathan, Baz, and many others who have nurtured this feeling of community together through forums, Twitter, Twitch chats, YouTube videos, and so much more, a steadfast Pantheon faithful have rallied around Visionary Realms and their hopes of finding a new home. This is not to say this is a community of unflappable positivity. 
It's a community determined to make Pantheon successful, and part of that has been, over the years, holding VR accountable. It's a warm, welcoming community of individuals with amazing talents, heartfelt stories, unique perspectives, and valuable input, and VR has helped nourish that over the years. Community is at the heart of Pantheon, and it shows. So those are, those are the five reasons why I personally am very interested in this game and seeing where it goes, and why I have also pledged to be a alpha level backer of this game. And if you are interested in learning more, the links in the description will take you to the website, all, some of the other content creators, and I hope to see you soon in Terminus.